Hi friends, Molson here and welcome back to this opening repertoire video on the Scotch Gambit. So this is an opening you can play against 1E4E5 and it's great for those of you who don't really want to go into the theoretical ground of the Italian or the Spanish Royal Lopez, but you want something a little bit more solid than your typical Danish and King's Gambits and so on. It's a good middle ground and I'm going to go through all the options for white against black's main responses and give you my recommendations there. As always, if you find the video useful, do feel free to give the thumbs up so that way we can get the content out to more people who may find the video useful. I hope you enjoy the content and I'll see you very shortly. So before we get into the main lines, I like to understand what is happening in the sidelines and explain that to you first. But if you want to skip ahead, feel free to do so using the timestamps provided down below. So the Scotch Gambit starts after 1e4e5, knight f3, knight c6, and there are a couple of different move orders to reach the position we want, but the one I recommend is 3 pawn to d4, and after black captures, then we have to move bishop to c4 instead of knight takes d4, which would go into the main line Scotch. So after bishop c4, a couple of less common moves would include pawn to h6, which may be seen at a lower level, not really dangerous at all and you have two main options here one is just a castle and after knight f6 answer with the move pawn to e5 which is one move we'll see a lot um, in in this video for example the best move for black here is to counter our bishop with pawn to d5 and after bishop b5 knight to e4 knight takes d4 we reach a position similar to our main line except that this pawn h6 does not really help black at all Another option is just to go knight takes d4, and here there are a couple of common traps which black can fall into. One, for example, is bishop to c5, a very common blunder which loses immediately to the sacrifice bishop takes f7, king takes, and queen h5 check, a common tactic whenever you see this bishop on c5 undefended. Instead of bishop c5, black has other options. Let's say knight to f6, after which we could play knight takes on c6 and push the pawn up to the e5 square. Here for example moves such as queen to e7 don't really work because we can just always castle the king to safety. Um, knight e4, knight d2 is already very good for white. We see black is having a hard time developing the king side. Moves such as knight h7 don't really work because of queen f3, queen e7, and again white can just castle, and black is having problems developing his pieces. If we take it back a few moves, another common mistake I see, especially at the lower level, is knight takes d4, where black will exchange the knights very early on in the center, drawing the, black, the white queen into the center. But here black can't really chase the queen away, so the queen is very well positioned and for example, bishop e6, we can just play knight c3. And here already, white is ready to push in the center. And one game continued pawn to e5 here for white. And after pawn takes, queen takes, we see black is already in a little bit of trouble. One game continued bishop to d6, and now black fell into a tactic after queen b5 check, c6. Queen takes b7. It looks like black is picking up the bishop on c4, but then ran into the move. Queen takes c4 check. And now white is winning back the piece with a couple of pawns as well. So h6 is not really working here um, at all for black. Another option is to play the move pawn to d6 instead. So this one's a little bit passive, even though it can be very solid for black. White should just recapture the pawn right away. Knight f6, knight c3, bishop to e7, castles, castles, and rook e1. Bishop d7, bishop f4, for example, is one way white can develop his pieces. And we see that the white bishops are much more active than black's two bishops here on d7 and e7. Plus the extra space advantage gives white um, a slight edge here. So instead, after bishop c4, one better sideline is to play the move bishop to b4 check. So after this, we have 
some reminiscence of the Evans Gambit if you've seen um, that opening where we sacrifice the pawn with c3 pawn takes and here we can recapture with b takes c3 which would lead to a mainline Evans Gambit and if you're happy with this sort of position then uh, feel free to check out my Evans Gambit video but what I would be recommending instead is after pawn takes we just castle as not to get into that opening if you're not familiar with it already so after castles if black goes for the pawn on b2 as well then we can just recapture back and we see these two bishops have excellent compensation on these long diagonals and one sample variation here I'll give to you is say knight to f6 pawn to e5 and here black has two main options one is knight g4 one is knight h5 I think knight h5 is perhaps um, slightly better than knight g4 but I recommend a3 here followed by knight c3 and perhaps bringing the knight into the d5 square next move so black's best option is probably to play knight to f4 and position is a little bit unclear but I think white has excellent compensation for the sacrifice material we can follow up with some rook e1, queen d2, knight d5 type of ideas here. Instead, after e5, if knight g4 is played, then we throw in a3, bishop e7, and I'll just give you an example of what may happen here. Let's say pawn goes to h3. Also, the reason why the bishop has to go to e7 again is um, after bishop c5 we have always these tactics on f7 bishop takes f7 king takes f7 and queen d5 check h3 knight h6 queen goes to c2 this time stopping the knight coming to f5 and for example after castles one sample variation might be bishop d3 and in order to defend the pawn if black plays g6 then we can follow up with knight c3 and we see that we've caused black to weaken his position quite a bit by creating all these dark squared weaknesses. The knight is not on particularly good square and also we're having knight d5 ideas to sort of utilize this diagonal um, next. So another popular sideline for black here is to play four bishop to e7 after which I recommend knight takes d4 straight away and here black has played two main things one is knight e5, bishop b3, d6 I recommend pawn to f4 chasing the knight away knight g6 and here you can play either pawn to c4 interesting move setting up some sort of maroxy bind in the center if bishop check g3 bishop back knight c3 knight e7 bishop e3 for example we see white is gaining a lot of space in the center with these pawns even though it's slightly weakened this structure it's okay because black's pieces are very restricted you could even chase the knight away with h4 h5 and castle queen side next move instead you can just castle king side as well after knight f6 play knight c3 castles and queen d3 is a very useful move in this position next we can develop our bishop and then slide our rook across to support these pawns where we will most likely launch some sort of king side pawn attack with our pawn majority perhaps even go for some knight f5 hitting the bishop on e7 or winning the light squared bishop so after knight takes d4 another move for black which is more popular is pawn to d6 and here you can just castle there's nothing wrong with this knight f6 knight c3 castles rook e1 bishop d7 bishop f4 so this is a position we looked at before where i said white has a slight advantage just because of our better pieces so this would be perfectly fine but I actually like to play a different move after d6 and that is knight takes c6 pawn takes and this interesting move pawn to e5 so the idea of this pawn push is to stop the knight from developing to f6 so we're causing black a little bit of uh, development issues which he has to solve especially if he has never seen this in a the game then um, you're definitely already getting some sort of psychological advantage so after this move, if black captures the pawn, then we have the move queen to h5. And one game here continued, pawn to g6. So we're hitting the, both the pawns here. Queen takes on e5, knight f6 was played, and white played the move 
bishop to h6, stopping black from castling and also threatening bishop g7, picking up the knight on f6. Queen d6 was played. Of course, we shouldn't trade queens here because black improves his pawn structure, so queen e2. And after bishop e6, white took, queen takes, 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 and just said thank you very much for the extra weaknesses and pawn islands, which most likely black will lose one of the pawns later on in the game. So instead, the move after e5, d5 is a much better response for black, and I recommend bishop d3. Here, for example, bishop c5, we should play the move queen to h5. This is to stop queen h4, which is probably the best square for the queen at the moment. And it also is very hard to dislodge the queen if it ever gets to h4. So we play queen h5, and if knight e7, we can play the move knight to d2. And this knight is going to either of two squares, either knight f3 or knight to b3. For example, with bishop e6, we might castle, queen d7, knight b3, bishop to b6, and then bishop to e3. And now we're threatening to bring the knight into the c5 square. If black captures, then we capture back. The double pawns aren't a problem. We have the knight c5 square. And we also open up the f file, so this is great for white. If instead, after this, black tries queen to d7 to try and offer a trade of queens, then we could play the move pawn to h3, stopping that. And after knight f5, if we could continue with the move knight to f3 here. With a very pleasant position, in my opinion, for white. For example, black can't easily just castle his king because there are many threats, one being pawn to g4. Now, if the black knight moves, then he gets checkmated on h7. Therefore, g6 is pretty much forced. But this variation is lost for black now because bishop takes f5, pawn takes queen, bishop takes queen, bishop takes, and pawn takes on h5. Now, the threats of rook g1 and bishop h6 and bishop g5 are just way too strong and black can't stop all of them. For example, rook e8 here runs into bishop h6 with a winning attack for white. Therefore, already here after knight f3, I believe that um, white has a very pleasant position to play. Although it hasn't been played before, um, it's interesting to uh, get some tests going. So I hope you enjoyed these sidelines and next we'll move on into some of the main lines. So now we move into some of the mainline options here for black, starting with the move bishop c5, which I think is one of the best options apart from knight f6. So here the best move for white is to go c3, but I'll just show you why knight g5 is not so good, but it may be tempting for some of you to play. After knight g5, knight h6 is the best response for black, and you can go for knight f7, knight takes, bishop takes, king takes, queen h5 check g6 queen takes bishop here and it does look good on the surface but black is already totally fine there's no way to continue your attack here and black has two ways one is pawn to d6 totally fine position and the better one i believe is pawn to d5 because after you recapture here knight b4 will win the pawn back and of course if you go for pawn takes then it might even get worse after rook e8 check and rook e5. So I don't suggest we go for this position if we want some advantage as white. Instead, we should play the move pawn to c3. Much stronger response. And here I see a very common trap which a lot of players as black fall into, and that is to take the pawn on c3. So if you're playing black here, please do not take the pawn on c3. Because this runs into the move bishop takes f7. Not queen d5, because that would be the, met by queen e7. But bishop takes, king takes, queen d5 check. And after king goes to e8, you can take the bishop, but you can also throw in this annoying check with queen h5 check. Since if black goes to a dark square of the king, we take the bishop with check. So g6 is met by queen c5 here with uh, excellent position for white, of course. So instead, after pawn to c3, black has a couple of sideline options other than knight f6, which we'll look at next. He can also try queen to f6, 
This one doesn't quite work because you can play the move pawn to e5, a very good and direct response which you'll see a lot especially if there's a piece on f6 you can attack. So knight takes doesn't work by the way because queen e2 pins the knight and if you try and defend it then pawn takes on d4 attacks the knight and now there's no way for black to unpin himself so he's losing a piece. So after e5, one move here for black is to go queen g6, but we can just recapture the pawn. If queen check, then you just have bishop e3 with totally fine position. If bishop check, you play knight c3. And if black tries to go for this pawn on g2, it just doesn't work tactically because rook goes to g1, queen h3, and now you have the very strong bishop takes f7 check. And king takes, of course, gets the queen forked on g5. Therefore already here white has a very strong pawn center and otherwise we'll be able to castle next move. So one response after c3 that has been played against me before is queen to e7. So after queen to e7 I believe we should just castle here because the pawn is not under any threat. Here my opponent went for the move pawn takes on c3 which is very very dangerous because it allows white to develop the knight to c3 and it's coming into d5 with tempo. Here opponent played the move knight to f6 which is a serious mistake because it allows white to play a move which uh, we'll see a lot of and as I mentioned before whenever there's a piece on f6 which you can attack you usually want to play this move and it's the move pawn to e5 here. So black is not in time to castle because there's just too many threats in the center. So knight takes of course doesn't work because rook e1 pins and wins the queen. Therefore white, uh, black went for knight to g4. But after knight g4, knight d5, queen d8, the game continued bishop to g5, bishop to e7 and white took knight takes and then queen d4 and now we see black is in a whole lot of trouble here because the knight's def undefended and if knight h6 there is sometimes bishop takes and e6 ideas. The game continued pawn to d5 and after en passant queen takes black dropped the pawn on g7 and here black resigned because there's just too many threats on f7 rook e1 and so on so on. So after queen e7 castles a better move might be to try pawn to d3 but after pawn to d3 I think we can do a very similar idea here. We start with the move pawn to b4 gaining some space and after the move bishop to b6 again we want to go for a move which stops the black knight from developing to f6 and just before black is in time to play d6 and that's the move pawn to e5 here for white and I believe that white has a very pleasant attack here since it's hard for black to develop his king side. So now we'll move on to what I think is the better move and that is move knight f6 instead of queen e7. Okay so after bishop c5 c3 the better move for black is to play knight to f6 after which we should chase it away immediately with the move pawn to e5. Knight g4 is one move, we answer with pawn takes on d4 and we have this strong pawn center, h3 will chase the knight away. Another move is knight to e4, here we play the move bishop to d5 and black is in a tough spot of how to defend this knight. f5 doesn't really work because we just take on d4 and we see black is unable to really castle the king to safety next. So instead black might try this slightly dubious sacrifice on f2. In order to grab a few extra pawns, king goes to g3, pawn takes, bishop takes, and black looks to have some compensation but it's not really enough. In practice white is doing very very well and the extra piece should so sort of speak for itself. The knight's coming into the game, the rook will slide across and the king is perfectly safe where it is. You can sort of just play h3, slide the king back and artificially castle if you really need to. Therefore, after e5, the more dangerous option is pawn to d5. Here we play move bishop to b5, knight to e4, and we should recapture on d4 with the pawn. 
Here there's two options for black, one is bishop b6, bishop b4 isn't particularly scary at all, I mean you can block with the bishop or the knight and despite even losing the bishop pair here, the strong pawn center for white and easy development means that uh, we should have absolutely no problems. So bishop b6 is more popular. Here we should play the move knight to c3. It's very important here to try and delay castling with your king if you can. After castles, bishop to e3. There's a couple options for black, one being knight takes c3. Pawn takes. This is sort of what white wants though, where we force black to take on c3, we improve our pawn structure slightly, we also remove a lot of the pressure from the d4 square. So white should be fairly happy here. We can take the knight and go for these positions as well, but generally speaking, this is a solid enough position. Black is doing okay as well. Maybe white is microscopically better, but it's um, not that much. So after bishop e3, bishop to g4, the idea here is to play the move pawn to h3. So black wants to put as much pressure as he possibly can on this d4 pawn, but he doesn't really want to capture the knight. He doesn't want to capture here either because after the move pawn takes, we see the reason why white had delayed castling. And here already after captures, captures, the king is perfectly safe where it is because these pawns block up the center. And we follow up with the move pawn to f4, rook g1, queen g4, with a big king side attack and we can just keep the king in the center if we really need to so there's no problems here at all. So instead bishop h5 is preferred for black and in this position white mainly plays the move queen to c2 so this is the most trendy move. The idea is that if we take here again we take back with the g pawn chasing the knight away and if the bishop drops back we'll see that there's no more pressure on this f3 knight. So before we get look at bishop g6, there's also bishop a5, which is a really good option for black here. After bishop a5, the best option, I think, for white is to go bishop takes c6. So at first it looks like castles is okay, but after castles, uh, black does have potentially a force draw. After bishop takes f3, g takes f3 and knight takes d4. This is black's main idea in this position. Very interesting. After bishop takes, queen g5 check, king goes to h1, and black can play the move bishop takes c3, attacking our bishop, so we have to take the bishop, and after captures, black can play the move queen to f5, and for a long time I thought this was just a directed draw here and there's no way for white to really avoid the draw and the idea is of course if I take the knight you just take here with a perpetual check on g4 and h4 but then I found that white does actually have a move here and that is the move rook f to c1 very hard move to find over the board but it does keep the game going because at the same time you're defending the queen with the rook. So you avoid any sort of knight discoveries. One of the threats black had was knight g3 check, picking up the queen, as well as the perpetual. And now the king has some squares to sort of run. And for example, after knight to g5 here, threatening checkmate, we have to move bishop to e2. Knight takes f3, bishop takes, queen takes, queen d1, black can play the move, queen to f5. And okay, white avoids the draw, but I'm not sure if his position is really that preferred. It looks very bad to me because the rook is coming towards e8, e6, and it just looks very hard to play for white. So instead, I'm suggesting either you just accept the draw in the previous position or we're going for the move bishop takes c6 instead and after pawn takes now we're castling the king and after bishop takes pawn takes
if black goes for this variation with bishop takes, pawn takes, knight g5, you can play f4 here, or you could even just play the move king to g2 and keep the game going. Um, and I think white is uh, totally okay. The game is more or less balanced in this position, but there's still play for both sides. So you could definitely play on here for a win. So instead, after bishop a5, there's also the move bishop to g6, which is the main line here for black. After bishop g6, we continue with queen to b3, hitting the pawn on d5, and also sidestepping the pin. We see that there's no more pressure on the f3 knight anymore. After knight e7, castles, c6 for black, which is a common idea to sort of drop the knight back so the bishop can free, free up a square on c7. Bishop d3 is my preferred move here. You can also play bishop to e2. Now, there's a couple of moves for black. One is knight f5. One is knight to d2. After knight d2, you can go bishop takes d2. I also like knight takes d2. This is, um, I believe, more correct of a recapture. After knight d2, bishop takes d3. Rook to e1. So black's idea of this knight d2 move is just to win our light squared bishop and then uh, say that he has the bishop pair but of course he's probably going to lose the dark squared bishop next to knight a4 so we can't maintain it um, for that long knight f5 for example is met by knight a4 immediately hitting the bishop and this bishop and he has to give up one of them back so bishop b5 knight takes b6 followed by let's say a4 and knight f3 we see that this bishop on a6 is not really doing so much on this diagonal, whereas sooner or later we know black is going to play the move pawn to f6, after which we'll capture and stick our knight into this important e5 square. So after the move, rook to e1, let's say bishop back to g6, we have the move knight to a4 again, knight f3 is also fine, knight f5, knight f3, and I think white has a good position here where we can sort of press with virtually no risk uh, at all. So next move we'll take this bishop when black is threatening to move it. So something like this. And at some point we'll wait for f6 after which we'll capture and then put our knight into this e5 square. And I think white has definitely some play in this position and again it's risk free. So uh, I very much like the white position a little bit more. Okay, so now we'll have a look at the move for knight f6, after which I suggest the move pawn to e5. You can castle here, but it leads into the old max range variation, which is meant to be totally fine for black after he just recaptures the pawn on e4. So e5 is preferred. After this, d5 is the best move for black. And after d5, we have bishop to b5, knight to e4, knight takes d4, and there are a couple of different move orders which black can play and I'll go through each one with you. But we'll start with the move bishop to c5 here. The idea being that we can't really move our knight and take on c6 even though this might look good because we run into ideas of bishop takes on f2 check. So you have to be very careful of moving your piece. Instead we should play the move bishop to e3 blocking this diagonal and defending our knight. Here black has a couple of moves. One is bishop to d7. After bishop d7, we should capture the knight with the bishop. This is one of the main ideas to give up the bishop pair in order to create some holes after black recaptures. If black recaptures with the bishop, then it looks like the pawn structure is saved, but in fact, the bishop is slightly misplaced and white can just play around this piece on c6. Maybe play f3, develop the rest of our pieces, and we should be totally okay here. So b takes is usually preferred. After knight d2, good move by white. We pose a question of what to do with this knight on e4. Knight takes, queen takes. And here, for example, if black goes bishop to b6, the main idea for white is to answer with this move knight to b3. So we're going for the c5 square. So this is one of our main plans in this position. If we can blockade this square on c5 with a piece, Preferably we want to 
trade off dark square bishops, get the knight to c5, then this is very good for us. And typically when a bishop hits the c5 square, we tend to go for this knight b3 plan, which is a lot more effective. For example, castles here is met by castles followed by a blockade here. Maybe queen c3 as well. So queen takes d2, castles for example, then we have to move castles by white, and some games have followed here. I've had this position a number of times as well. So after knight to b3, bishop to b6, the plan is to go queen c3. So defending this pawn, and also threatening bishop c5 or knight c5, gaining as much control over c5 as you possibly can. So rook f to e8, if f6, then I suppose you can just take the pawn and then recapture everything and put your knight on c5 with a tiny tiny edge because black's pawn structure is a little bit weakened. So instead after queen c3 rook f e8 was played in a number of games so here we can play the move pawn to f4, f6 and here excellent move for white is to go bishop to c5 of course, we couldn't take this pawn because our bishop was hanging. But this is a nice tactical idea in this position. For example, after takes, takes, I had some games after queen takes e5, fall into the trap of rook to f8 check, and now black wins a, a loses a piece. The queen on e5 drops. So instead of that, other moves such as a5 don't really help. Again, we can just play a4. And our idea is to, again, just blockade blockade this square. Bishop d4 here is a good move. Holding on via some tactics. Queen g4, knight c5. Holding on to the pawn. Holding on to um, the square and c5 as well. Bishop takes c5, knight takes c5 gives us a very pleasant outpost on c5. So it's already very difficult for black. So f takes, queen g5 was played in one game, but then after rook a to e1, we see that white has this nice passed pawn. Maybe we play knight d4, put our pawn to b4, we put all our pieces onto the dark squares, and then we maintain our bind over the position. So this is plan number one. It's very effective, especially if there's a bishop on c5, and that's sort of to put your knight on b3 and play around these dark squares. Uh, so next we'll have a look at what happens if black doesn't put the bishop on c5 right away and opts for some different setup instead. Okay, so now after knight f6, e5, d5, bishop b5, the knight hops in, we take, black will go for the move bishop to d7 instead takes takes and we'll look at positions where black will just forego putting the bishop on c5 instead looking to push the pawn up to c5 and chase the knight away after castles black could even try this right away after which we can play the move knight to b3 and for example c6 is well met by this pawn push pawn to f3 where the knight doesn't have too many squares to go to if knight g5 we play f4 gaining a tempo the knight can't really go back this way because it might get chased again with f5, therefore has to come back. And after knight e4, knight c3, we've gained a few moves, pushing our kingside pawn majority, which is one of the main attacking opportunities that we'll see in this particular line. And after knight c3, we're not afraid of the double pawns at all, because after takes takes, we see that white will follow up with bishop to e3, and we're fighting for this c5 square once again. If after castle is bishop e7, which is one of black's main attempts to avoid playing bishop c5, white can continue with f3, knight goes to c5, and I suggest we go directly with f4 and a kingside attack plan. You can also opt for plans where you play the knight to b3, similar to what we looked at in the previous positions to try and get the bind, but... Um, I think the direct kingside attack might work better in this case. Here, after the move pawn to f5, trying to block things up, we can just play knight c3, castles, bishop e3, again followed with knight b3, knight a4 type of plans, and stick a piece into 
c5 square. So castles and f5 going for the direct poor majority attack. Why not? Because we want to get an attack as quickly as possible. If we can get in the move pawn to f6, maybe bishop h6, we can see it's starting to get very dangerous for black. So after f5, a couple of moves, maybe rook e8 can be played, maybe knight e4. So let's say rook e8, you might continue knight c3, bishop f8, bishop f4. Again, we're defending our pawns and we'll bring our pieces in and once we're ready to, we'll make a decisive push um, in the center. So after f5, knight e4, another move that can be played here. And here I'm suggesting again, not to be afraid of the double pawns in this position. And you can play knight d2, but I quite like the move knight to c3. And after the move knight takes, pawn takes, we still maintain our strong pawn majority here. And we're not particularly worried about these double pawns because our attack should be coming very quickly. And that's really what's more important um, in this position right now. So that's my suggestion for this particular line to just, instead of playing for the c5 square, to go for this big kingside push and play with your pawn majority as best as you can. So the last variation we have here is actually a very concrete one. And it starts after e5, d5, bishop b5. Again, knight e4, knight takes d4, bishop c5, bishop e3. We said this was the most accurate move. And instead of bishop d7, which is what we looked at previously, here black is going for castles and I believe this to be one of the best options for black if he wants to try and go for a direct equalization. After the move castles, I suggest knight takes c6. This is one of the only variations where you do play knight takes e6. Pawn takes and then directly going for bishop takes c5, trading off as many pieces and accepting uh, black's pawn sacrifice. So knight takes, we take the pawn on c6, and then we go queen takes on d5. Okay. If you castle here instead of queen takes d5, I think black has many ways to reach equality. So it's important that you capture the pawn. So here black should decline the pawn sacrifice, since if he accepts it, I think bishop takes, rook takes, and knight a3, uh, we just maintain our extra pawn here and... A slight advantage for white. So queen e7 is preferred, after which we can castle, and two moves here for black, which has been mainly played, and that's bishop a6 or rook takes b2. If rook takes b2, we can play the move knight to c3, and after rook d8, queen f3, knight e6, probably roughly um, balanced, although we still have our extra pawn for the time being. Uh, rook takes c2, I think queen d4 offers white decent chances because the knight is hopping into the d5 square next. And we still have this pawn majority in the king side, which black has to be careful of. So bishop a6. So after bishop a6, I'm recommending the move rook to c1, a very important move in this particular position. After rook e1, I think rook takes b2, knight a3 doesn't really give white that many chances, and black is probably close to just equalizing here. So rook c1, I think, is a very important move in this position. And after rook d8, if rook takes b2 here, then we have knight c3. Again, the queen's coming to f3. Uh, bishop d5. 96, bishop to b3. White is okay because the rook is a little bit trapped at the moment and there's no clear way to get the rook out. So rook f8 instead, queen f3, and the line here after knight e6 continues knight c3, knight d4. Again, if if black takes the pawn, we sort of transpose into similar variations in as we looked at before, after queen e3. So here after knight d4, queen goes to e4. And one variation continues. Knight takes, queen takes, 
And I think white is in a very comfortable position here. Okay, black can play the move bishop to b7 next and probably win the pawn back on e5. But do we still maintain um, a much better pawn structure. And I think black is the one who's playing to equalize here, whereas white has a lot more winning chances. Okay, so that concludes my video on the Scotch Gambit. If you guys have any feedback or comments or questions, do leave them in the comments down below. Otherwise, um, do feel free to drop a like if you enjoyed and learned something from the video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.